Hi, I'm Carol at Caramel Colors. Welcome to my studio. Toner or glaze. They're actually a different name for the same product. So if you start with an, a color like this, like you see on our furniture here, and if you add a glaze to it, you can get a beautiful classic look like this. And the reason that we like to use our glaze or our toner is because you have so many choices. So you can start with a color like this, roll on your glaze, your toner, and wipe it back to something like this or have a million looks in between. And that's not an option that you get with wax. So, so I wanna show you our colors because we have a lot of different products here. We call this our botanical glaze or our black brown toner. And it, it is the color that has a lot of our grayish black in it. This is our original toner, which we called it toner. It's the darkest of all of our colors. So if you're going over super, super dark colors, or you want a very primitive look or a very dark, mucky, yucky toner is a good one. And then we have what we called our glazes, coffee, tea, and cream. And those have some wonderful uses. Coffee being uh, great for over reds or darker colors. Tea is just what it sounds. It's a tea glaze, classic. It may look green to you here, but it really is not. It's just a, a great color for over everything. And we have our cream glaze, which looks beautiful over everything and masks things out, almost like giving you a restoration hardware type look. Okay, so let me show you how easy this is to do. One of the things that's so great about using caramel colors is we don't require any expensive tools to do the job. We do like a certain tool and we use it for absolutely everything and that's our all-purpose fabric roller. I'm gonna be working with the botanicals toner or the, the one that looks the most black brown. And whenever I start doing a project, I wanna start on a small piece, like one drawer, especially if you're doing you know, a, lot, a larger piece or something. You wanna start and establish your color. So I'm rolling it on. You can see how easy this is to roll on. Now, sometimes I'll just be doing something and I'll roll out the glaze just like this and totally leave it alone and it's beautiful and I wanna call that done. But on this particular piece of furniture, that's gonna to be too dark for me. So I'm gonna roll it on don't have to roll it on in any special way. You know, it can be haphazard like this. And um, just covering all my little surfaces where this drawer will be hidden. Now we have a choice. Are we going to wipe this back with a dry cloth or are we gonna wipe it back with a damp cloth? So I'm gonna start gently. I'm just gonna start like this and I'm pushing it, I'm not patting it, but I'm just kind of dusting a little bit and getting my glaze the way I want it. And that's still a little too dark for me and a little too busy, so I'm gonna try being a little bit more aggressive, wiping this back. Even though it may seem that I took a lot off, I wanna show you the difference. Okay, so we did our sample on a drawer, and now I'm actually gonna start on this very small area because I have very little area to cover uh, on the front. You always can um, take a brush, you know, in some areas, because as I said, there's a lot of working time here, and you can, you know, play with your glaze and be finessey. The nice thing is, if you take too much off, you can always put more on. And of course, it has plenty and plenty of working time, so you can always take more off. But that, you know, that is just another way. And again, this is a really in inexpensive, like a couple dollar brush, a little chip brush that we're using here. And, you know, you may want to do something like that to have some darker contrast in some areas. And I am still using that dry rag. If I was going to use a damp rag, as I mentioned before, that will take, going to a damp rag 
will really remove much more glaze as you can see the difference between here and here. Now sometimes it's nice to use a brush to get into some crevices, but you don't want to put it dark in the crevices because then you're going to have to work hard to get that out of there. So what I like to do, if I'm going to see it, it becomes really difficult to get that very dark stuff out of the crevice. So I might use a brush a little bit and, you know, kind of take some off onto my rag and then go into my crevice or even better yet, take my roller up to the crevices. This is how easy it actually is. and then take my brush when it's dry and doesn't have a lot on it and sort of brush it out to those crevices and then I don't get a big dark buildup. See when I talk about working time or open time is how wet this glaze is so you have plenty of time to work it. But the most important thing about this being toned is we can have this beautiful custom look and then when we want, whenever we want to change this piece, we don't have to strip it, we can just paint right over it. And that's the beauty of the glaze or the toner. Sometimes if I have a large area to glaze like this, I'll glaze a little bit and I'll work with a irregular edge and come back into the part that I glazed because it will re-wet itself. So I'll show you what that means. I glazed into this area because I don't want to create, you know, a lap line. So I'll work the glaze a little bit up to the area that's rolled out. Now that I really have the hang of this uh, piece and what I'm doing, and I, my hands are in it, now I'll do the top, which is always the most important part. 